Hi there, uh, I'm Jeffrey Canal, the Director of Software Development again, and I'm here to show you about the automation and reporting features that are inside of Vehicle Spy X. So Vehicle Spy X's scripting capabilities can also be used in a headless environment. Uh, this means that uh, running them in a Docker container or uh, in any sort of cloud infrastructure that you have. Uh, can be done very easily. And what this lets you do is um, run automated tests, as, as we've already seen, but also do uh, performance and metrics calculations uh, and get the results of them. And this is something we'll go over here. What's nice about this is that you can easily switch between uh, your tests between running live on the vehicle or on a bench or um, in a simulated environment, you know, like a virtual ECU environment, or from recorded data, and all this can be done with essentially like one line change. Uh, from this, we can then quickly build beautiful reports that give us uh, the metrics and the information that we're interested in, uh, and then this can be easily integrated into any CI or CD system that you have. So uh, we're going to go over creating some pretty nice reports uh, and show how easy that can be done. So to start out, I'm going to go to our, our tutorials over here. We have this getting signal values tutorial that essentially shows how to get just all signal points. So like any good programmer, I'm just going to come right to skip right to the end and copy it directly. You can substitute this in Stack Overflow for this. I'm sure we've all done this before. Uh, OK. And let's go ahead and recall this one. I'll overwrite my old one, report.py. And this uh, is pretty straightforward. Basically, what we do is we create a new instance of vSpyX. We add the database and the buffer that are passed on the command lines. On the command line, we hook up the networks together. And then essentially, we use this uh, on point function to add a callback handler whenever a new decoded point is uh, processed. And this could be coming from a DBC um, or an ARXML or in our case here, a VS3 file. You can see here we check to see the data point and we're going to print out some information about it. So to run this, I'm going to go ahead and create a new launch configuration, run report.py. I'm going to add the arguments. So the first one is the uh, database then our recorded buffer file. And then actually I'm going to tell the program how to hook up what's in the channel that's in the database to the network that's in the recorded file. Go ahead there. We'll call this port. OK, yep, good. And then now if we go ahead and run this, you can see we're basically getting this dump of all of the, every single signal point that's uh, that's coming in. And what's great is that um, you, know, with, you get a really great development experience. You can come here, you can set breakpoints, and we could take a look at the specific point that we have and look at, okay, where did it come from? What frame was it on? It was on RBID 70 here, the DLC. Look at the data uh, and get all of the different um, get all the different interesting pieces. So the uh, debugging experience is really pretty great. Um, when using this. So as you can see here, this is basically just printing out every single point that we have. Um, there's actually two code paths here. One that prints out every signal point. We also have the ability to uh, specify a specific signal that we might be interested in. So I'm going to say the RPM signal here. So if I do that and we run this, you can see now that it's just printing out all of the RPM signals. And in fact, if we come here, we can set a breakpoint and we get a look and we say, oh, there's been 6,788 counts of this. We can see what was the previous value, uh, the current one. Everything is available to us here within the scripting engine, which is pretty great. So this is a very simple example that can show you how you can sort of get all of the points of the data. You'll notice that we're using this recorded buffer file. What's really cool is that we can actually switch this to using live data, only changing some very simple things. So I'm going to go ahead and open up Vehicle Spy X over here. On my desk, I actually have, and you should see 
I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger. You can see here that I have two actual um, hardware devices here. I have a ValueCam 3 and a ValueCam 4.2 that are hooked up here on my desk connected to each other. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here to my folder and I'm gonna take these files. We'll just go ahead and grab them in. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna activate the ValueCam 3 here and I'm gonna bridge these two channels together. And just by doing that, I've actually created a gateway. So now uh, this buffer is being replayed onto uh, the value can three. So you can see right here, here it is live going. If we wanted to, we could, uh, or we could actually, I will switch this to signal view, which I actually think is a cooler level way of looking at things. Um, and we come here and you can see like, here's the RPM signal that we're, that we're interested in here. Uh, and you can expand up and see all the frames where it comes from. But yeah, so this is what we're interested in, and this is being replayed. So if I come back over here to uh, Visual Studio Code, what I'm gonna do now is all I have to do is just say, okay, instead of looking at that buffer, let's go ahead and look at, uh, what was it? It was V20927, V20927. Okay, so that's going to be, the source now is going to be that value can four. And I can just go ahead and change this to saying, okay, use this live bus data. And then all I'm really gonna do is make a few changes uh, to our script here. I'm gonna go ahead and say sources buffer equals, and we'll use Python's is instance to basically check whether the uh, these by x dot frames dot buffer source, we're gonna check to see whether what we opened was actually um, a buffer or real. And then all we're gonna do here is we're gonna, the loop property is only on actual buffers. Uh, so we'll go ahead and only uh, do it that way. And then the only other thing we'll change is you'll see over here, we start and then we sort of run forever. We wait until the buffer to be over, but we had the loop on. So basically this will run forever. So what we will do now is we will say, if source is buffer, otherwise we will app that vehicles by that scheduler that wait until and we'll go ahead and say get the current timestamp and then add oh I need to import date time to get the date time class the new line here and say date time dot time delta and give it seconds equals 10 okay and what's nice is you can see you get all your regular IntelliSense here inside of Visual Studio Code and essentially this goes ahead and so we'll then we'll just run for 10 seconds and so now the last thing that we need to do is turn off the analysis mode so analysis mode essentially said, go as fast as you can and don't actually run in real time, run as fast as you can, which is great if you got recorded traffic, violates the laws of physics in reality. So we'll go ahead and turn that off. And if we run this, now we can see that we are getting actually live data from the, uh, that's being replayed back. And if I'm over here and I go offline, you'll see it actually stops there. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and run again, and we can run here. We'll see our data, we stop, there it is. So this is actually the live data that's being uh, replayed from the simulation over to the value can three, and then our script right here is running uh, with the value can on the value can four two. So now that we have this, you can see we can very quickly switch between having um, recorded traffic or live traffic, and all of our logic um, is exactly the same. So this is great, um, and we can sort of see how we can use this to get our signal values, but let's see if we can figure out a way to actually do something a little more interesting. So what I'm actually going to do now is we're gonna switch to this reporting example. Um, which is pretty cool because what this will actually do is we are going to um, create a report using uh, matplotlib and numpy. So what we'll be able to do is we will create 
Uh, we're going to cache the actual signal points here. And then over here, we're going to get rid of the printfs that we have here and replace it with essentially every point that comes in, we're going to put into just a giant list that we have. And creating a new report is extremely simple. Essentially is as simple as we use this reporting module. We say we want to make a new report. We can go ahead and give it a title. And then before we loop over all the signals, we will create a sections. And then for the specific section that we have, we will create a new section for each signal and call it the name of the signal. And then what we're going to do is once we've finished running, loop over all the signal points that we have, and we're going to calculate some statistics using NumPy. So we'll calculate the standard deviation, the average, calculate some stats. We'll also use matplotlib to plot uh, some uh, a plot of some of the signals and you can see it's as simple as generating the plot right here and then adding the image to our report then all we need to do is once we've done this go ahead and actually just call build HTML and build PDF so we report both support both generating HTML and PDF reports go ahead and save that and I'm going to go back and we'll go back to using the recorded data for this one so now we'll go ahead and run this. And right now, in the background, the report is running, running, running. There we go. We can see the report got created. And over here now, in our folder, we have this nice, pretty report that we created that for our RPM signal that we had tells us the min, the max, the average, and the standard deviation, and in fact, even a plot here of it. Um, and this was all created essentially with just a few lines of, of adding a table. All we had to do is make one function call to add an image, and then we call generate, and there we go. And in fact, we also have the uh, PDF version of the report. That's the same thing, just in a PDF format, if that's more your speed. So we can see how we can use these automation tools to create reports um, and any sort of metrics maybe we want to calculate. Now this was just basically looking at a specific signal. Um, I'm going to show a completed example of a more slightly more complicated script. Um, and what this is doing is actually creating a watcher for all of the ISO 15765 traffic. You can see we add some callbacks whenever we get indications of new traffic. And then what we actually do in these callbacks are do things like measure the ST min time that was reported to evaluate if all of the timings were successfully observed and also to calculate the metrics of the observed timing parameters um, on the bus. So this one is a little bit more involved to write, although not too much more. Um, we're also doing, we're going to also report the uh, record bus utilization, um, add that to the report as well, any ISO 15 errors, um, and then we'll take all of these, put it into one report and create a nice report from that. So for that, I will go ahead and create a new configuration for that. I'll call this one report two because that's what it's called. Okay, here's report two.html. You can see we actually are calculating the bus utilization of the network. So we can see what the average, median, and standard deviation of the bus utilization is. Um, and then some reports about the ISO 15 transactions that occurred. You can see there were 12 successful single frame and 489 multi-frame transactions. We can take a look between the different ECUs. What was the minimum, the max, and the average? Uh, some statistics about the ST min uh, properties in ISO 15. And then, in fact, in this buffer, we actually have an ST min violation where uh, it was observed that one millisecond was, we, it was asked that there'd be one mill, millisecond ST min. And in fact, the observed was only was 453 micro, microseconds. You can see here that corresponds with this negative value up here in the differential statistics. Um, and all of this was you know, done through uh, simply adding a few callbacks 
to uh, this ISO 15765 um, observer class that we created. And then this, uh, this report um, was run on recorded simulation data. But if you remember from our first example, switching between a virtual ECU or recorded or looking at live is extremely simple. And we can take this exact same report and run it in real time against a vehicle or in a CI system. So as far as that goes, uh, what I actually have here is this exact demo here. Um, and what we've done is this is our internal uh, GitLab, uh, GitLab installation. And what I did is I created a CI uh, report that actually uses, so this is just from a base Docker image. We go ahead and install Python, we install vSpyX, we copy the license over, and then here we are running that exact report. And then as the artifacts or the output of the CI job are those actual reports that we had. So as you can see here, um, on every commit now, there actually are these reports, and you can see here it is running the test that we have here. And we can browse and look and actually see, oh, look, there's a report here. Go ahead and download it, open it. And then you can see this is the actual report that was generated on the CI server for the observed traffic, perhaps an or in a simulation environment, and then made this report as just the output of the CI system. And so um, from here, you can imagine how you could have any sort of metrics calculations within your development pipeline.